So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the paper I'm presenting this afternoon is joint work with uh, Tsukti, uh, chair from the Cambodian Economics Association. And we're going to talk um, a little bit about uh, clustering and looking in particular at uh, the possibility that we're, what we're observing in the data are spillover effects or competition effects. So just to give you an overview, in case I don't get to the end. Um, so what we're doing is we're investigating the pathway of firm clustering um, in the Cambodian context and... The microphone. It's better maybe, yeah. Um, so we're looking at whether or not we um, are seeing competition channels or technology spillover channels at work um, and whether they can explain the pattern of clustering that we observe. So the four main questions that we address are first of all whether firms are more or less productive, where there are clusters. Um, secondly, are the different types of firms impacted differently by the clustering? whether or not there are productivity spillovers and whether or not there, um, the, the different types of firms are affected differently by these uh, productivity spillovers. So the motivation has been um, kind of outlined already by our previous speakers. So the geographic clustering of firms can impact on productivity in different ways by reducing transport costs, by allowing access to a common pool of labour and then by um, allowing for technology and spillover effects. It also increases competition and as a result firms um, become more efficient through reducing slack or using their costs more efficiently and so this competitive pressure can be another source of productivity growth as a result. Um, there's an emerging body of literature that looks at this in developing country contexts and there's um, but the evidence is still quite scant um, while in developed countries you know it's been very well documented particularly in the case of the US and the UK. There are some exceptions here and the one that I guess that's closest to this paper um, is the one by Rusalem and Muntz and um, um, and other, other authors which looks at the, the case for clustering um, in Ethiopia. Um, what I kind of want to look at first is, uh, also as a motivation is why it should be given special consideration um, in a developing country context. And the two reasons I kind of say is that, well, first of all, it's already been given prominence in lots of industrial policy through the formation of um, industrial parks and through the formation of um, export processing zones. And there's not really been an evidence base for this. So that's one reason why we should take a closer look. And second of all, there, there may be different mechanisms at work compared to developed countries um, that, are, that are less well understood. So in terms of that, that latter point, why might the impact be different in developing countries? Well, first off, firms in developing countries potentially have a lot more to gain from clustering. They're starting from a much lower technological base, so the spillovers of new technologies, new innovations um, are likely to have a greater impact as a result. Secondly, competitive pressures might also be more pronounced in developing country contexts when we think about firms operating within a, in a cluster, um, particularly at early stages of industrialization and particularly where you may have um, underdeveloped physical infrastructure, which uh, prevents firms from locating um, away from where they're selling their goods um, or services. Um, and as a result, I mean, if they're, if they're located very close to their, to their customers, there may be more of an incentive for firms to protect their technology, to share less amongst each other. So in this setting, Clusters might actually um, um, have less te fewer technology spillovers, but um, more competitive pressures as a result. This can prevent small firms from growing and maybe act as a deterrent um, for firms to locate, locate close together. Also, the composition of clusters might be very different, and what we look at in this paper are service sector uh, um, firms. So we look at um, service provision. They make up a very large proportion of small firms in developing countries, and their competitive pressures might be even more pronounced given that they must locate where they're providing the service in many cases. Um, also, informal firms make up a very large proportion of, of economic activity in developing countries, so um, in, this, in this paper we also look at the impact on informal firms. So just to describe briefly the mechanisms that we're thinking about in terms of the competition effect, you would expect that the more firms that are located in close proximity, the tougher the competition will be, as we've said. Um, so firms should appear more productive in markets with more competitors as a result. Um, and then the productivity effect, you might expect that firms experience spillovers from other firms located nearby. But this will depend on the characteristics of the cluster and will depend on the characteristics of the firm. So technology transfers can happen through the movement of labour um, between firms, so they bring with them their, what their knowledge that they've learned from the firm that they were operating in. This is probably more likely where you've got a lot of large firms clustered together and it's probably more likely um, in high-tech sectors. 
But you can also have spillovers through the actual copying of technology or the sharing of technology. So things like technological complementarities, where you know, you've got firms that start to interact with each other because, with, because they're located close, close to each other. One of them wants to introduce e-business, or one of them wants to juice, introduce e-banking, and as a result, the rest of the firms also um, um, will do this. So there's a complementarity in the technology. Um, sharing of technology is probably less likely for close competitors given that they will have a greater incentive to protect um, their productivity advantage. Of course, there are lots of identification issues in trying to look at the impact of, um, of being in a productive cluster on individual firm productivity. Um, there's three kind of, I've grouped it into kind of three different problems in terms of, of, of identifying a cause effect. Well, first of all, firms may be more productive in large clusters because they've gone there because there are natural advantages. So they're close to good infrastructure, they're close to a port, or, or um, they're close to some kind of large market like a, like a city. So that's one of the things we have to consider. Second of all, there's endogenous location choice to consider. More productive firms select into more productive sectors. So this makes the impact of the cluster itself difficult to identify. And then you have um, the reflection problem, which makes um, separating, out, separating out other kind of common shocks that impact everybody in the cluster um, from individual um, firm pro productivity. In this paper, we only have cross-sectional variation to exploit, so this makes um, the identification even more difficult. So what we do with our, with our data that we do have is well, we control, try and control for these, each of these other factors and then in the end end up hopefully uh, convince you that we've isolated some kind of productivity spillover channel. And the first step is to control for natural advantages. So what we do is we control for the density of firms within the cluster. So the larger the number of firms in the cluster, the, uh, because they're more likely to be naturally advantageous areas, we reckon that we have controlled for that. Second, we try to isolate our competition effects. Um, we do this by looking at the proportion of firms in the cluster that are in the same sector. This is evidence of, of being um, in more competition with your close neighbours. And a positive coefficient would suggest that competition effects makes firms more efficient, if you like. So it's kind of a, 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 an efficiency enhancing um, competition effect. In cross-sectional data, um, and the type of data we have, which is revenue-based, um, we may see a negative effect, and it's what we do actually see. Um, and this is due to the fact that, you know, where you've got a lot of competition, you're going to earn lower profits, um, and reallocations, I guess, can happen at a lag. So the least efficient firms will eventually, I guess, exit, and um, then um, there'll be a reallocation towards more productive sectors. So in aggregate, there may be improvements, but at the firm level, this kind of competition effect may be, um, may be negative. Um, to control for the endogenous location choice, we control for the average productivity of all other firms in the cluster. Um, and we, this, I guess, captures whether productive firms locate in higher productivity clusters. And once we've controlled for all of these things, we isolate these productivity spillover effects using the average productivity of all other firms in the cluster that are in the same sector. So having controlled for all of these other things, we, we hope that, that this variable here is capturing what we're interested in identifying. To control for common shocks, we only have a cross-section, but we do have some um, information from two years previous to that, and enough information so that we can control for changes in the cluster between um, two, two periods. So we control for change in the size of the cluster, and we control for the change in the proportion of firms in the cluster that are in the same sector. Um, we also compute each of the cluster level variables, excluding the individual firm, to, to, to further help um, with this uh, reflection problem. So the model that we estimate is a cross-sectional model where we look at the output of the firm, which is revenue-based. Um, we have our, our four measures there that capture each of the different, um, different um, variables that I've mentioned. The two controls for the correlated effects. And we have um, our typical firm characteristics in there along with the inputs. Um, we also include sector-specific fixed effects, regional fixed effects, and we look at it at the district and the commune level. We have a revenue-based output measure, so it doesn't capture physical productivity, which is a problem in these kinds of, when you're using these kinds of data. Um, so it'll also capture prices and differences in markups. So um, while we, don't, we can't really disentangle that using this one, one cross-section, we do take it into account, the fact that the effects might be different in more competitive sectors than non-competitive sectors. We do take this into account when we're interpreting our results. The data that we use um, is uh, uh, from Cambodia. We have uh, 2011 is the main data source, which is the Census of Industrial Production. Um, it covers um, 
um, 500,000 establishments um, and we can match this to the enterprise listing which was initially just a listing of firms of very basic information on employment um, that um, we use to look at the, the change between 2009 and 2011. It also contains the, the location of the firm so we know the village that they live in, we don't know the actual street number, the GPS code, but we do know what village they're in. Just to give a very broad overview of the types of firms we're talking about, most of them are very small. Um, so it's kind of a different, we're looking at a different kind of clustering really here. We're looking at the, the very, very small micro firms um, and, um, uh, and how clustering is impacting on them. Majority are service sector firms. I think that's a nice contribution here because it's not really been, been looked at in too much detail before. Um, very few are formal, so only 8% of them are registered, um, and lots of them are, are located you know, in, the, in the home. Um, and only 1% are actually foreign owned. 15% um, of firms are located in urban areas, so there is a certain degree, you know, there's a good bit of deal of dispersion around Cambodia. Um, but there is a lot of concentration of business activities within villages, but you know, a fifth of firms within a village on average are in the same um, four digit sector. It's just a couple of maps, I've only got five minutes, so um, this just shows the density, the darker um, the, the the darker the, the district, if, um, the, the more densely um, populated that area is with firms and in terms of the number employed also. So you do see a certain amount of clustering, particularly around the main um, urban centres in Phnom Penh and also just along the main railway line also there. So in terms of the results, so in the first step we just look at natural advantages. This is controlled for um, using the uh, uh, the number of firms in the cluster and it's positive, which is what we would expect. Then if we conclude our control for the proportion of firms in the same sector, and this is what's capturing our, um, our, com our competition effect, um, we find that it's negative. Okay? So this is a cross-section, so what this suggests is that the more firms that are in the same cluster as you, this um, has a negative effect on your revenue generating ability. And because we have a revenue-based um, dependent variable here, um, I don't think this is too surprising um, that it makes your, your actual revenues less. Now, the extent to which this leads to reallocation effects, we can't tell in our data because we only have the one time, time period. And this effect holds regardless of whether you think of clustering at the village level or the commune level and including different levels of regional controls. We disaggregate this by types of firms by including some interactions and we find that for the registered firms, the competition effect appears to be even greater. So this is a different group of firms in that sense. For manufacturing firms, it appears to be even greater. This is the interaction term here. So it's negative for all firms, but even more for manufacturing firms. And the size doesn't seem to really, really matter in this case. And our core result, I guess, is looking at the extent to which we're observing productivity spillovers. So here we've control for all of the, the other things, the other effects, the correlated effects and all of the other effects. And we're trying to isolate the impact of the average productivity of firms in the same sector on the individual productivity. And um, we find very limited effects, really. So um, when, we, when we cluster at the village level and include our district fixed effects, there's no impact here. When we cluster at the commune level, which is the broader level of aggregation, we do seem to find some small productivity um, spillover. Um, and what's also of note here is that this competition effect seems to have disappeared. This is, I guess, something we might expect in a village where the firms are located very close together. There may be a lot of competition, um, whereas when you think of a broader level of a broader cluster, the competition effect is less and the productivity spillover effect um, becomes more notable. Disaggregating by the types of firms, um, we see that uh, when we look at the registered enterprises and we, we um, cluster um, or we think of a cluster as a commune, um, we find that this productivity spillover effect does exist, but the competition effect is far outweighing it here. Um, when we look at the unregistered enterprises, however, the informal enterprises, it seems that this kind of clustering at the, at the commune level um, is leading to pro productivity enhancing spillovers. The competition effect has disappeared. Um, looking at manufacturing and services, um, what's interesting here is that the services um, where at the village level, where they really are competing with each other, we don't find any spillover effects. Whereas when we look at the broader level of aggregation of the commune, where um, they um, are less likely to be competing directly with um, the other firms in the network, um, we don't find any competition effect, um, but we do find a productivity spillover. So it seems like the level of competition and the um, really determines the extent to which we can see uh, productivity spillovers. For manufacturing firms, while there are competition effects, we do observe some spillovers here at the village level, um, but um, they're of a much lower magnitude. 
Um, small firms, we find a similar, a similar kind of story as you do find for the, um, for the informal firm or for the service sector firms. Um, a positive productivity spillover with no competition effects. For the medium and large firms, there are productivity spillovers um, within these clusters. And this is um, a, a strong enough result given that there's no competition effect here either. We do some more robustness checks. We limit our analysis to firms that were in existence in 2009, so to exclude the possibility that there's, uh, they're, they're selecting into this location because of the specific pro pro productivity of the time. Um, and we find um, that, that our main result um, holds. So I think I'm out of time. So this is just really a summary of, of, of what we have found. Um, and I guess from, the, from this, I want to think about what the policy kind of um, conclusions might be. We see that there are observed benefits to performance from clustering, but they don't outweigh the negative effect of competition. Um, it really matters here in terms of whether we see productivity spillovers, it matters the extent of competition between the different firms. Um, so I guess introducing some flexibility, um, looking at why it's more difficult for firms to compete if they are formal, um, looking into diversification of customer base of firms, ensuring the supply of necessary inputs, all of these things might help to um, make uh, these productivity spillovers um, realized. So, sorry for rushing that at the yep. end. But. Thank you, Carol, for a very interesting uh, presentation.